This is chapter 27 of the Maternal Newborn ATI Assessment and Management of Newborn Complications. Assessment and management of newborn complications include assessment, risk factors, and collaborative care. It is essential for a nurse to immediately identify complications and implement appropriate interventions. Ongoing emotional support to a client and their significant other is also imperative to the plan of care. Complications include neonatal substance withdrawal, hypoglycemia, respiratory distress syndrome or RDS, asphyxia, meconium aspiration, preterm newborn, small for gestational age or SGA, large for gestational age or LGA, macrosomic newborn, post-mature newborn, newborn infection or sepsis, which is sepsis neonatorum, birth trauma or injury, hyperbilirubinemia, and congenital anomalies. Neonatal substance withdrawal. Maternal substance use during pregnancy consists of any use of alcohol or drugs. Intrauterine drug exposure can cause anomalies, neurobehavioral changes, and evidence of withdrawal in the neonate. These changes depend on the specific drug or combination of drugs used, dosage, route of administration, metabolism, and excretion by the parent and fetus, timing of drug exposure, and length of drug exposure. Substance withdrawal in the newborn occurs when the parent uses drugs that have addictive properties during pregnancy. This includes illegal drugs, alcohol, tobacco, and prescription medications. Fetal alcohol syndrome, or FAS, results from the chronic or periodic intake of alcohol during pregnancy. Alcohol is considered tetrogenic, so the daily intake of alcohol increases the risk of FAS. Newborns who have FAS are at risk for specific congenital physical defects and long-term complications. Risk factors. Maternal use of substances prior to knowing they are pregnant. Maternal substance use during pregnant. Pregnancies. Expected findings. Monitor the neonate for abstinence syndrome or withdrawal or neonatal opioid withdrawal syndrome, which is NOWS, and increase wakefulness using the neonatal abstinence scoring system that assesses for and scores the following CNS, metabolic, vasomotor, and respiratory findings, and gastrointestinal. CNS is high pitched, shrill cry, incessant crying, irritability, tremors, hyperactivity with an increased moral reflex. Increased deep tendon reflexes, increased muscle tone, and disturbed sleep pattern, hypertonicity, and convulsions. Metabolic, vasomotor, and respiratory findings are nasal congestion with flaring, frequent yawning, skin mottling, retractions, apnea, tachypnea greater than 60 a minute, sweating, temperature greater than 99. Gastrointestinal is poor feeding, regurgitation or projectile vomiting, diarrhea, excessive, uncoordinated, constant sucking. Opiate withdrawal, manifestations of neonatal abstinence syndrome or NOWS, heroin withdrawal, low birth weight, small for gestational age or SGA, manifestations of neonatal abstinence syndrome, increased risk of sudden of infant, increased risk of risk of sudden unexpected infant death, Methadone withdrawal, manifestations of neonatal opioid withdrawal syndrome, or NOWS, increased incidence of seizures, sleep pattern disturbances, stillbirth, SUID, higher birth weights compared to with heroin exposure. Marijuana withdrawal, preterm birth, intrauterine growth restriction, long-term effects such as deficits in attention, cognition, memory, and motor skills. Amphetamine withdrawal, Preterm or SGA, drowsiness, jitteriness, sleep pattern disturbances, respiratory distress, frequent infections, poor weight gain, emotional disturbances, delayed and growth development. Alcohol withdrawal, jitteriness, irritability, increased tone and reflex responses and seizures. Fetal alcohol syndrome, facial anomalies, small eyes, Flat mid face, smooth philatrum, and thin upper lip, eyes with the wide space appearance, epicanthal folds, strabismus, ptosis, poor suck, small teeth, cleft lip or palate. Many vital organ anomalies, such as heart defects, including atrial and ventricular septal defects, tetralogy or phallate, patent ductus, arteriosus. Developmental delays and neurologic abnormalities, prenatal and postnatal growth delays, and sleep disturbances. Tobacco, 
prematurity, low birth weight, increased risk for SIDS, increased risk for bronchitis, pneumonia, and developmental delays. Patient-centered care, nursing care. Nursing care for maternal substance use and neonatal effects or withdrawal include the following in addition to normal newborn care. Perform ongoing assessment of the newborn using the neonatal abstinence scoring system assessment as prescribed. Elicit and assess the newborn's reflexes. Monitor the newborn's ability to feed and digest intake. Offer small frequent feedings. Swaddle the newborn with legs flexed. Offer non-nutritive sucking. Monitor the newborn's fluids and electrolytes with skin turgor, mucous membranes, fontanelles, daily weights, and eyes and o's. Reduce environmental stimuli. Medications. Based on withdrawal manifestations, this would be mor morphine sulfate. It's an opioid. Methadone, opioid analgesic. Phenobarbital is an anticonvulsant. The intended effect is decrease CNS irritability and control seizures for newborns who have alcohol or opioid withdrawal. Elevate, elevate the newborn's head during the following feedings and burp the newborn to reduce vomiting and aspiration. Prevent infection. Check for any medication incompatibilities. Cluster cares to minimize stimulation. Initiate a consult with Child Protective Services. Pharmacologic treatment is prescribed based on the severity of the withdrawal symptoms and assessment scoring tools. In addition to methadone, morphine and pheno or phenobarbitual clonidine may be prescribed. Client education. Utilize a drug and or alcohol treatment center. Understand the importance of SIDS prevention activities due to the increased rate in newborns or parents who use methadone. Hypoglycemia. The newborn source of glucose stops when the umbilical cord is clamped. If newborns have other physiological stress, they can experience hypoglycemia due to inadequate gluconogenesis or increased use of glycogen stores. An initial drop in blood glucose after birth is a common occurrence due to the cessation of the maternal supply of glucose. Healthy turn newborns can compensate for this change by utilizing their glycogen stores to mobilize free fatty acids and ketones to provide energy. Healthy turn newborns can tolerate a decrease in glucose levels to as low as 30 milligrams per deciliter within the first two hours after birth. Newborns who are at risk for inadequate glycogen stores to compensate for this physiological change should have their glucose levels closely monitored after birth. This includes newborns who are preterm, small or large for gestational age, newborns of diabetic clients, and any who display manifestations of hypoglycemia or experience difficulty transitioning to extra uterine life. Interventions to raise blood glucose levels are usually indicated when glucose levels fall below 40 to fit 45. Untreated hypoglycemia can result in seizures and neurologic injury. <clears throat> Perform blood, blood glucose monitoring by heel stick for all newborns who are identified as being at risk or displaying manifestations of hypoglycemia. Initiate early feedings within the first hour of life if the newborn is clinically stable. Newborns who are unstable or unable to feed can require intravenous glucose infusions to maintain blood glucose levels. Continue to monitor blood glucose levels and feed every two to three hours for at least the first 24 hours of life, dependent on facility protocol. Skin-to-skin -skin contact will promote breastfeeding and thermoregulation to stabilize blood sugar levels. Respiratory distress syndrome, asphyxia, and meconium aspiration. RDS occurs as a result of surfactant deficiency in the lungs and is characterized by poor gas exchange and ventilatory failure. Surfactant is a phospholipid that assists in alveoli expansion. Surfactant keeps alveoli from collapsing and allows gas exchange to occur. Atelectasis, or collapsing of a portion of the lung, increases the work of breathing. As a result, respiratory acidosis and hypoxemia can develop. Birth weight alone is not an indicator of fetal lung maturity. Complications from RDS are related to oxygen therapy and mechanical ventilation. Pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, retinopathy of prematurity, bronchiopulmonary dysplasia, infection, and intraventricular hemorrhage. Suction the newborn's mouth, trachea, and nose as needed. Maintain thermoregulation. Provide mouth and skin care. Correct respiratory acidosis with ventilatory support. 
correct metabolic acidosis by administering sodium bicarb. Maintain adequate gen- oxygenation, prevent lactic acidosis, and pre- avoid the toxic effects of oxygen. Monitor lab results, INO, and wait to evaluate hydration status and decrease stimuli. The medications, baractant, calfactant, and leucinactant. These are lung surfactant, intended effect, restores surfactant, and improves respiratory compliance for newborns who are premature and have RDS. Nursing actions, perform a respiratory assessment including ABGs, respiratory rhythm, and rate and skin color before and after administration of agent. Provide suction to the newborn prior to administration of the medication. Assess endotracheal tube placement. Avoid suctioning of the endotracheal tube for one hour after administration of the medication. Factors that can accelerate lung maturation in the fetus while in utero include increased gestational age, intrauterine stress, exogenous steroid use, and ruptured membranes. Preterm newborn. A preterm newborn's birth occurs after 20 weeks of gestation and before completion of 37 weeks of gestation. A late preterm newborn's birth occurs from 34 to 36 weeks, seven, six days, <clears throat> weeks of gestation. Preterm newborns are at risk for a variety of complications due to immature organ systems. The degree of complications depends on gestational age. There is a decreased risk for complications the closer the newborn is to 40 weeks of gestation. Goals include meeting the newborn's growth and development needs and anticipating and managing the associated complications. <clears throat> such as RDS and sepsis. The main priority in treating newborns who are preterm is supporting the cardiac and respiratory systems as needed. Most newborns who are preterm are cared for in a neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU. Meticulous care and observation in the NICU is necessary until the newborn can receive oral feedings, maintain body temperature, and weighs approximately 4.4 pounds. Complications, RDS, or respiratory distress syndrome. This is decreased surfactant and the alveoli occurs regardless of a newborn's birth weight. Bronchiopulmonary dysplasia, or BPD, causes the lungs to become stiff and non-compliant, requiring a newborn to receive mechanical ventilation and oxygen. BPD is also commonly caused by mechanical ventilation. It is sometimes difficult to remove the newborn from ventilation and oxygen after initial placement. Aspiration, a result of a newborn who is premature not having an intact gag reflex or the ability to effectively suck or swallow. Apnea of prematurity, a result of immature neurological and chemical mechanisms. Intraventricular hemorrhage, bleeding in or around the ventricles of the brain. Retinopathy of prematurity. This is a disease caused by abnormal growth of retinal blood vessels and is complication associated with an oxygen administration to the newborn, can cause mild to severe eye and vision problems. Patent ductus arteriosus occurs when the ductus arterio- arteriosus reopens after birth due to the neonatal hypoxia or when the ductus arteriosus does not close after birth. Necrotizing enterocolitis, an inflammatory disease of the gastrointestinal mucosa due to ischemia. It results in necrosa and perforation of the bowel, which is short gut syndrome, can be the result of secondary to removal of most or part of the small intestine due to necrosis. Aww. Additional complications, infection, hyperbilirubemia, anemia, hypoglycemia, and delayed growth and development. Expected findings and assessments. Ballad assessment showing a physical and neurological assessment totaling less than 37 weeks of gestation. Periodic breathing consisting of 5 to 10 second respiratory pauses followed by 10 to 15 second compensatory rapid of respirations. Manifestations of increased respiratory effort and or respiratory distress, including nasal flaring or retractions of the chest wall during inspirations, expiratory grunting, and tachnipia. Apnea, a pause in respirations 20 seconds or greater, low birth weight, minimal minimal subcutaneous fat deposits, wrinkled features with abundance of lanugo covering back, forearms, forehead, and sides of face, skull and rib cage that feel soft, eyes closed if the newborn is born at 22 to 24 weeks of gestation, weak grasp reflex, lethargy, tachycardia, and poor weight gain, 
lab test, CBC showing decreased HGB and HCT as a result of slow production of RBCs, your analysis and specific gravity, increased PT and APTT times and an increased tendency to bleed, serum glucose, calcium, bilirubin, and ABGs. Nursing care, perform rapid initial assessment, perform resuscitative measures if needed, monitor the newborn's vital signs, monitor eyes and nose and daily weight, ensure and maintain thermal regulation in a newborn who is preterm by using radiant heat warmer. Manifestations of hypothermia is apnea, cyanosis, hypoglycemia, feeding er intolerance, lethargy, irritability, and bradycardia. Administer parental or anterior nutrition and fluids as prescribed. Minimize the newborn stimulation. Position the newborn in neural flexion, neutral flexion with the extremities close to the body to conserve body heat. Perform a skin assessment tool daily to minimize risk of skin breakdown and encourage skin-to-skin contact. Evidence of infection. Temperature instability, lethargy, irritability, cyanosis, bradycardia or tachycardia, apnea or tachapnea, feeding intolerance and glucose instability. Observe the newborn for findings of dehydration or overhydration. Dehydration is urine output less than one milliliter. Urine-specific gravity is greater than 1.015. Weight loss, dry mucous membranes, absence in skin turgor, and depressed fontanelle. Overhydration is urine output greater than 3 milliliters. Urine-specific gravity is less than 1.001. Edema, increased weight gain, crackles in the lungs, and intake greater than output. Small for gestational age newborn. SGA describes a newborn whose birth weight is at or below the 10th percentile and who has intrauterine growth restriction. Common complications of newborns who are SGA are perinatal asphyxia, meconium aspiration, hypoglycemia, polycythemia, and instability of body temperatures. Expected findings. Weight below 10th percentile, normal skull but reduced body dimensions, hair is sparse on scalp, Wide skull sutures from inadequate bone growth, dry loose skin, increased subcutaneous fat, thin, dry, yellow, and dull umbilical cord rather than gray, glistening, and moist, evidence of meconium aspiration, and hypoglycemia. Support respiratory efforts and suction the newborn as necessary to maintain an open airway. Provide a neutral thermal environment for the newborn to prevent cold stress. Administer parental nutrition if necessary. Maintain adequate hydration. Protect the newborn from infection. And participate in caring for the newborn. Anticipate home care needs. Large for gestational age or macrosomic newborn. LGA occurs in neonates who weigh above the 90th percentile or more than 8.8 pounds. Neonates who are LGA can be preterm, postmature, or full term. Newborns who are macrosomic are at risk for birth injuries like shoulder dystocia, clavicle fracture, or a cesarean birth, asphyxia, hypoglycemia, polycythemia, and herb du chin paralysis due to birth trauma. Uncontrolled hyperglycemia during pregnancy, leading risk factor for LGA, can lead to congenital defects with the most common being congenital heart defects, tracheoesophageal fistula or TEF, and CNS anomalies. Expected findings, weight above the 90th percentile, large head, plump and full face, manifestations of hypoxia including tachypnea, retraction, cyanosis, nasal flaring and grunting, sluggishness, hypotonic muscles and hypoactivity, tremors for hypocalcemia, hypoglycemia, respiratory distress from immature lungs or meconium aspirations. Findings of increased intracranial pressure. This is dilated pupils, vomiting, bulging fontanelles, and high-pitched cry. Nursing care prior to birth. Prepare the client for a possible vacuum-assisted or cesarean birth. Prepare to place the client in McRoberts position, which is lithiotomy position with legs flexed to chest to maximize pelvic outlet. Prepare to apply suprapubic pressure to aid in the birth of the anterior shoulder, which is located inferior to the maternal symphysis pubis. For a newborn who is LGA following birth, obtain blood glucose level within the first hour of life. 
initiate early feedings or IV therapy to maintain glucose levels within the expected reference range, identify and treat any birth injuries, assess the newborn for birth trauma like broken clavicle, herb Duchenne paralysis. Post-mature infant. A newborn who is post-mature is born after the completion of 42 weeks of gestation. Post-maturity of the infant can be associated with either of the following. Dismaturity from placental degradation, degeneration and uroplacental insufficiency, continued growth of the fetus and in utero. So the dismaturity is placental functions effectively for approximately 40 weeks, resulting in chronic fetal hypoxia and fetal distress in utero. The fetal response is polycythemia, meconium aspiration, and or neonatal respiratory problems. Perinatal mortality is higher when the postmature placenta fails to meet increased oxygen demands of the fetus during labor. Continued growth of the fetus in utero. Because the placenta continues to function effectively and the newborn becomes LGA at birth, this leads to a difficult birth, cephalopelvic disproportion, as well as high insulin reserves and insufficient glucose reserves at birth. The neonatal response can be birth trauma, perinatal asphyxia, and a clavicle fracture, seizures, hypoglycemia, and or temperature instability, which is cold stress. A newborn... A newborn who is post-mature can be either SGA or LGA depending on how well the placenta functions during the last weeks of pregnancy. Newborns who are post-mature have an increased risk for aspirating the meconium passed by the fetus and utero. Persistent pulmonary hypertension, this is persistent fetal circulation, is a complication that can result from meconium aspiration. There is an interference in the transition from fetal to neonatal circulation and the ductus arteriosus, connecting the main pulmonary artery and the aorta. And foramen aval, which is shunt between the right and the left atria, remain open and fetal pathways of blood flow continue. Risk factors. In most cases, the cause of a pregnancy that extends beyond 40 weeks of gestation is unknown, but there is a higher incidence in first pregnancies and in clients who have a previous post-mature pregnancy. Expected findings. Wasted appearance, thin with loose skin, having lost some of the subcutaneous fat, peeling cracked and dry skin, lethargy, leathery from decreased protection of vernix and amniotic fluid, long thin body, meconium staining of fingernails and umbilical cord, neurological manifestations that become apparent with the development of fine motor skills and macrosomnia. Monitor vital signs, administer and monitor IV fluids, moisturize the skin with petrolitum-based ointment, provide thermal regulation, provide early feedings to avoid hypoglycemia, and identify and treat any birth injuries. Tracheoesophageal fistula, or TEF, is a gastrointestinal anomaly that can occur independently or together with an EA. TEF alone can include a variety of abnormal connections between the esophagus and trachea. TEF and EA combined include a blind esophagus pouch and or abnormal connection between the esophagus and trachea. The presence of a TEF places the infant at risk for aspiration and respiratory complications. TEF can be detected and diagnosed during a prenatal ultrasound. Depending on the specific deficits present, excessive oral secretions, drooling, feeding intolerance, which is gagging, coughing during feeding, spitting up, and gastric distension, and respiratory distress and cyanosis. These are expected findings. <clears throat> Patient-centered care. Maintain thermal regulation, electrolyte balance, and acid-base balance. Nursing care. Position supine with head of the bed elevated, orogastric tube or low continuous suction, Monitor for signs of respiratory distress. Do not feed any newborn who has excessive oral secretions with respiratory distress until a provider is consulted. Newborn infection sepsis or sepsis neonatorum. Infection can be contracted by the newborn before, during, or after birth. Newborns who are more susceptible to microorganisms due to their limited immunity and inability to localize infection. The infection can spread rapidly to the bloodstream. Newborn sepsis is the presence of microorganisms or their toxins in the blood or tissues of the newborn during the first month or after birth. 
Manifestations of sepsis are subtle and can resemble other diseases. The nurse often notices them during routine care of the newborn. Organisms frequently responsible for newborn infections include Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Escheria coli, influenza, and Streptococcus beta hemolytic group B. Prevention of infection in newborn sepsis starts perinatally with maternal screenings for infections, prophylactic interventions, and the use of sterile and aseptic techniques during birth. Prophylactic antibiotic treatment of the eyes of all newborns are and appropriate umbilical cord care also help to prevent newborn infection and sepsis. Expected findings. Temperature instability, suspicious drainage, poor feeding pattern, vomiting and diarrhea, color changes, tachycardia or bradycardia, low blood pressure, poor muscle tone and lethargy. Nursing care. Assess infection risks. Monitor for clinical findings. Monitor eyes and nose and daily weight. Isolation precautions provide newborn care to maintain temperature and client education uh, for discharge instructions. Understand and adhere to infection control. Use clean bottles and nipples for each feeding. Discard any unused formula. Perform proper hand hygiene. Promote adequate rest for newborn and decrease physical stimulation. Birth trauma or injury. Birth injury occurs during childbirth resulting in physical injury to a newborn. Most injuries are minor and resolve rapidly. Other injuries can require some intervention. A few are serious enough to be fatal. Types of birth injury. Skull, scalp, intracranial, spinal cord, plexus, and cranial and peripheral nerve. So the skull is a linear fracture or depressed fracture. The scalp is caput, succedenum, or hemorrhage. Intracranial is epidural or subdural hematoma and contusions. Spinal cord is spinal cord transaction or injury, vertebral artery injury. Plexus is brachial plexus injury or Klumpke's palsy. Cranial and peripheral nerve is radial nerve palsy and diaphragmatic paralysis. Risk factors, maternal age, younger than 16 or older than 35. Fetal macrosomia, abnormal or difficult presentations, precipitous labor, oligohydraminos, cephalopelvic disproportion, multifetal gestation, congenital abnormalities, cesarean birth. Expected findings, irritability, seizures within the first 72 hours, and decreased level of consciousness are manifestations of a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Facial flattening and unresponsiveness to grimace that accompanies crying or stimulation, as well as eyes remaining open, are findings to assess for facial paralysis. A weak or hoarse cry is characteristic of laryngeal nerve palsy from excessive traction on the neck. Flaccid muscle tone can signal joint dislocation and separation during birth. Flaccid muscle tone of the extremities suggests nerve plexus injuries or long-term or long bone fractures. Limited motion of an arm, crepitus over a clavicle, and absence of a reflex on the affected side are manifestations of clavicular fractures. A flaccid arm with the elbow extended and the hand rotated inward is an absence of reflex on the affected side. Sensory loss over the lateral aspect of the arm and intact grasp reflex are manifestation of herb duchenne paralysis or brachial paralysis. Localized discoloration, ecmosis, petechiae, and edema over presenting part are seen with soft tissue injuries. And the diagnostic procedure is birth injuries are normally diagnosed by a CT scan, X-ray of suspected area of a fracture, or neurological exam to determine paralysis of nerves. Hyperbilirubinemia. Hyperbilirubinemia is an elevation of serum bilirubin levels resulting in jaundice. Jaundice normally appears on the head, especially the sclera and mucous membranes, and then progresses down the thorax, abdomen, and extremities. Jaundice can be physiologic and path or pathologic. 
Physiologic jaundice is considered benign, resulting from new normal newborn physiology of increased bilirubin production due to the shortened lifespan and breakdown of fetal RBCs and liver immaturity. The newborn has physiological jaundice exhibits an increase in unconjugated bilirubin levels 72 to 120 hour after birth with a rapid decline to 3 milligrams 5 to 10 days after birth. Pathological jaundice is a result of an underlying disease. Pathological, pathologic jaundice appears before, before 24 hours of age or is presented after day 14. In the term newborn, bilirubin levels increase more than 0.5 milligrams, peaks at a greater than 12.9 milligrams, or is associated with anemia and hepatosplenomegaly. Pathologic jaundice is usually caused by a group blood group incompatibility or an infection, but can they, can be result of RBC disorder. Acute bilirubin encephalopathy is when the bilirubin is deposited in the brain. This occurs once all of the binding sites for the bilirubin are used within the body, resulting in necrosis of neurons. Bilirubin levels higher than 25 place the newborn at risk. This can result in permanent damage, including dystonia and athetosis, upward gaze, hearing loss, and cognitive impairments. Cornecturus is an irreversible chronic result of bilirubin toxicity. The newborn demonstrates many of the same manifestations of bilirubin encephalopathy with hypertonia, hypotonia, severe cognitive impairments, and spastic quadriplegia. Risk factors is increased RBC production or breakdown, RH or ABO incompatibility, Maternal ingestion of diazepam, salicylates, or sulfonamides close to birth. Neonatal hyperthyroidism, ecmosis, or hemangioma. Expected findings. Yellowish tint to skin, sclera, and mucous membranes. To verify jaundice, press the newborn's skin on the cheek or abdomen lightly with one finger. Then release pressure and observe the newborn's skin color for yellowish tint as the skin is blanched. Note the time of jaundice onset. Assess the underlying cause by reviewing the maternal, prenatal, family, and newborn history. Hypoxia, hypothermia, hypoglycemia, and metabolic acidosis can occur as a result of hyperbilirubemia and can increase the risk of brain damage. <clears throat> Diagnostic procedures is transcutaneous bilirubin level is a non-invasive method to measure a newborn's, newborn's bilirubin level. Nursing care. Observe the skin and mucous membranes for jaundice. Monitor vital signs. Set up phototherapy if prescribed. Maintain an eye mask over the newborn's eyes for protection of corneas and retinas. Keep the newborn undressed. For a male newborn, a surgical mask should be placed like a bikini over the genitalia to prevent possible testicular damage from the heat and light waves. Be sure to remove the metal strip from the mask to prevent burning. Avoid applying lotions or ointments to the skin because they absorb heat and can cause burns. Remove the newborn from phototherapy every four hours and unmask the newborn's eyes, checking for inflammation or injury. Reposition the newborn every two hours to expose all of the body surfaces to the phototherapy lights and prevent pressure sores. Check the lamp energy with the photometer per facility protocol. Observe the newborn for effects of phototherapy. Bronze discoloration is not a serious complication. Maculopapular skin rash, not a serious complication. Development of pressure areas, dehydration, poor skin turgor, dry mucous membranes, decreased urinary output, and elevated temperature. Maintain adequate fluid intake to prevent dehydration. Phototherapy. The newborn's bilirubin should start to decrease within four to six hours after starting treatment. Congenital anomalies. Newborns can be born with congenital anomalies involving all systems. Anomalies are often diagnosed prenatally, a nurse should provide emotional support to the parents whose newborn is facing procedures or surgeries to correct the defects. When congenital anomalies are present at birth, they can involve any of the body symptoms. Major anomalies causing serious problems include the following. Congenital heart disease, neurological defects, gastrointestinal problems, musculoskeletal deformities, GI G deformities, or gerontorial deformities, metabolic disorders, and chromosomal abnormalities. 
So congenital heart disease or CHD is atrial septal defects, ventricular septal defects, coarction of the aorta, tetrogenly of the phallet, transposition of the great vessels, and stenosis. Neurological defects is neural tube defects, hydrocephalus, encephalopoly. Cleft lip palate is gastrointestinal. Musculoskeletal is club foot, polydactyl development, dysplasia of the hip. Gerontality is hypospadias, epispadias, extratrophy of the bladder. Metabolic disorders is phenylketonuria, galactosemina, and hypothyroidism. Congenital anomalies are generally identified soon after birth by APGAR scoring and brief assessment indicating the need for further investigation. Once identified, congenital anomalies are treated in a pediatric setting. Cleft lip palate is a failure of the lip or heart soft palate to fuse. Tracheoesophageal atresia is failure of the esophagus to connect to the stomach. Phenylketonuria, or PKU, is the inability to metabolize the amino acid phenylalanine. Galactosemina is inability to metabolize galactose into glucose. Hypothyroidism, slow metabolism caused by maternal iodine deficiency or maternal antithyroid medications during pregnancy. Neurologic anomalies, like spinal bifida, is a neural tube defect in which the vertebral arch fails to close. Hydrocephalus is excessive spinal fluid accumulation in the ventricles of the brain. Patent ductus arteriosus is a non-cyanotic heart defect in which the ductus arteriosus connecting the pulmonary artery and the aorta fails to close after birth. Tetralogy of phallet is cyanotic heart defect characterized by ventricular, ventricular septal defect, the aorta positioned over the ventricular septal defect, stenosis of the pulmonary valve, and hypertrophy of the right ventricle. Down syndrome is trisomy 21, which is the most common trisomic abnormality with 47 chromosomes in each cell. Expected findings. Monitor the newborn for evidence of congenital anomalies. Cleft lip or palate, opening of the lip or palate. Tracheoesophageal atresia, excessive mucus secretions and drooling, periodic cyanotic episodes and choking. Duodenal atresia is abdominal distension, bilious vomiting, failure to pass meconium in the first 24 hours. PKU can result in cognitive impairment if untreated, not evident at birth, but will be identified with neonatal screening. Galactosemina can result in failure to thrive, cataracts, jaundice, cirrhosis of the liver, sepsis, and cognitive impairment if untreated. Hypothyroidism can result in hypothermia, poor feeding, lethargy, jaundice, and cretinism if untreated. Neurologic anomalies like spinal bifida is protrusion of the meninges and or spinal cord. Hydrocephalus is enlarged head and bulging fault nails. Patent ductus arteriosus is murmurs, abnormal heart rate or rhythm, breathlessness, and fatigue while feeding. Tetralogy of phallet is respiratory difficulties, cyanosis, tachycardia, tachypnea, and diaphoresis. Down syndrome is oblique per palpebral fissures or upward slant of eyes. Epicanthal folds, flat facial profile with a depressed nasal bridge and a small nose, protruding tongue, small, low set ears, short, broad hands with a fifth finger that has one flexion crease instead of two, a deep crease across the center of the palm, hyperflexibility, hypotonic muscles. Diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. Prenatal screening for congenital anomalies can be done by ultrasound and multiple marker screening. Confirmation of a diagnosis depends on the anomaly. Prenatal diagnosis or confirmation of congenital anomalies is often made by amniocentesis, chorionic villi sampling, or ultrasound. Pulse ox readings for CHD. Routine testing of newborns for metabolic disorders. A gun 3 test for PKU is done to show elevations of phenylalanine. Monitor blood and, u- or, and urine levels for galactose, galactosemina. Measure thyroxine, which is for hypothyroidism. Cytologic studies is karyotyping of chromosomes, such as buccal smear. It uses cells scraped from the mucosa from inside the newborn's mouth. 
Neurologic anomalies like spinal bifida protect the membrane with a sterile covering and plastic to prevent drying. This is nursing care. Observe for leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. Handle the newborn gently by positioning them prone to prevent trauma. Prevent infection by keeping the area free from contamination by urine and feces. Measure the circumference of the newborn's head to identify hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus. Frequently reposition the newborn's head to prevent sores. Measure the newborn's head circumference daily. Assess for manifestations of increased intracranial pressure, like vomiting and shrill cry. Patent ductus arteriosus. Educate the parents about surgical treatment. Teterology of phallet. Conserve the newborn's energy to reduce the workload, workload on the heart. Administer gavage feedings or give oral feedings with a specialized nipple. Elevate the newborn's head and shoulders to improve respirations and reduce the cardiac workload. Prevent infection. Place the newborn in a knee chest position during respiratory distress. Cleft lip and palate. Encourage expression of parenteral concerns, grief, and fears. Monitor the newborn's weight daily while hospitalized. Monitor for manifestations of dehydration. Encourage parenteral attachment. Suction nose and mouth gently with bulb syringe as needed to clear airway and educate parents on feeding requirements of newborn. Nutrition. Provide adequate nutrition. Cleft lip and palate. Determine the most effective nipple for feeding. Can use specialized bottles, cups, or syringes to feed the infant. Infants who have cleft lip can achieve breastfeeding with changes in positioning. Feed the newborn in the upright position to decrease aspiration risk. Feed the newborn slowly and burp them frequently so they do not swallow air. Cleanse the mouth with water after feedings. Tracheoesophageal atresia. Withhold feedings until esophageal patency is determined. Evaluate, elevate the head of the newborn's crib to prevent gastric juice reflux. Supervise the first feeding to observe for this anomaly. Duodenal atresia. Withhold feedings until surgical repair is done and the newborn has begun to pass stools. Administer IV fluids as prescribed. Monitor for jaundice. PKU. Specialized synthetic formula in which phenylalanine is removed or reduced. The parent should restrict meat and dairy products, diet drinks, which is artificial sweeteners, and protein during pregnancy. Aspartame must be avoided. Galactose semina. Give the newborn a soy-based formula because galactose is present in milk. Eliminate lactose and galactose in the newborn's diet. Breastfeeding is also contraindicated.